Our final speaker for this morning's session is uh, James Freeman. Um, I'm sure James is known to you all. He's spoken here at uh, BRT UK before and entertained us all then. Uh, John, James has spent all his time in the bus industry, so well qualified for that, and uh, started off as a bus conductor and worked his way up to uh, Chief Executive Officer for Reading Transport. So, thank you, James. I'm very proud of this uh, venue because the seats are the right colour for my presentation. <laughs> um, we're, it's just about time for me to finish now because it's 10.50, so uh, um, I'm sure that uh, one or two of you uh, I met in Belfast. Who was, who was at Belfast, Madam Interest? Yes, quite enough. Um, you can just leave now and go and have coffee. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll deal with everybody else in between. Um, I come at this a slightly different way from the previous three speakers, although I think quite a bit of what I'm going to say reflects back on what John was saying at the beginning of the morning. You, you remember that was a long time ago, but it's when it was. Um, and uh, so, uh, but I'm an operator, and uh, what I'm going to uh, talk about is uh, things to do with operating. Now, when I was uh, looking from down there, I was intrigued that why it was that the speakers weren't using their prompt from here, you see. But I realised the reason is because I can't see it. It's too small. <laughs> so I'm going to look that way, and that'll be fine. Um, well, I'm going to introduce you to this thing we call RTL, Reading Transport Limited. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about the way that we feel and the way we do in Reading. Um, and so it's not reading, it's Reading. I spent the first few years of my time in Reading wondering why everybody was so interested in books, and then I discovered that it was the name of the town. Um, and uh, I suppose, you know, what's all this about quality? And I, I echo straight away something that John said at the beginning. It's all about the detail. It's the little things that matter. You can have a huge thing, but it's the little things that make the difference. Okay, so we are, uh, my company is municipally owned. That's not very fashionable in the UK these days. There are 11 uh, uh, municipal uh, operators left in, in, uh, in Britain, and one of the, there's a man at the back who's from another one, uh, uh, all the way from sunny Edinburgh, and, uh, but there aren't very many of us. Uh, but what we lack in, uh, in quantity, we certainly, um, arguably, make up for in quality. Um, we run almost all the buses in Reading, but not quite all of them. Uh, we have a, a small business, £25 million a year turnover. Um, we run uh, 10 million kilometres a year. What on earth does that mean? I don't know. I always put it in, but it's interesting. It's more interesting that 20 million passenger journeys are generated, and, and you can see the size of our business. We have 140 buses, not very many, um, and 470 staff to run them. But Reading is only a town. This is a big issue in Reading. We're not a city, we're a town, so um, we're worried about it. And we have 180,000 people within the borough of Reading, but actually 280,000 within the contiguous urban area of Reading and what people think of. I mean, I live in a place called Reading, but I don't. I live in West Berkshire, which is organisationally different. That creates a lot of trouble, I can tell you. But in Reading itself, there's a long history of support for public transport, and they are very keen owners of their bus company. So that's, that's important. We have, uh, in terms of the town network, we have nine main corridors. It doesn't sound very many, but it means that virtually everybody in the town is within a, a sensible walking distance of a bus route somewhere. Um, we're, we, those nine routes are called premier routes, and they've had an enormous amount of investment since, particularly since 2004, as a result of a um, uh, consultant's report from a company called TAS, which said, what you need to do, folks, is uh, 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 actually to concentrate on the main corridors, make them work properly, and really add value to the journey experience on those on those corridors. So there's been a big investment in quality, not just in terms of the buses, although that's important and that's what we do, and the way the buses are run, also very important, um, but there's been a lot of work done around the town to make the buses go easier, because the thing that most puts people off public transport is when it doesn't work properly, and it nearly always doesn't work properly because of the infrastructure, i.e., and the other traffic. Look at all those buses. In, in Reading, unfortunately, not all those other buses, it's the other cars. I can't see this very well, although this is such a huge screen, that's the biggest I've ever seen this map, actually. Um, but uh, all I'm showing you here is that each, um, e each area of the town does have a, a route, and it's all colour-coded, and we're really into colour-coding. 
Um, so we're very vivid about our branding because our view is that the market is usually as narrow as a particular corridor, even a particular part of that corridor. Um, and so uh, the borough has been very thorough in giving us bus lanes and priority, um, bus stops and shelters, and it's been doing that, particularly the bus lanes, for a very long time. We had the very first contraflow bus lane in the UK in 1968. Um, it was put there because it had to be, because at the time we were running trolley buses and they wanted to put a one long one-way street and the trolley buses went the other way. So they just had to leave them, um, hence uh, Contraflow Bus Lane. But it's uh, still there if you come to Reading, very vital part of it. Um, a lot of things that we've been doing are uh, to do with the actual quality of the experience, and that is really to do with the people who deliver the service. And those people are absolutely key to it. So getting our workforce to feel really committed to what they're doing um, is where a lot of our energy goes. And part of the uh, way of doing that, of course, is to invest in their kit and make sure it all works. But if the people aren't on board, and I mean the staff are not on board, it's hopeless. We're really into bright colours, um, and uh, this is uh, well. This is the very uh, carefully named pink routes. Uh, they go to the most um, conservative area of the town. That's interesting, isn't it? Um, this was a brown service until Ray Stenning said, "I think the thing to do is call it bronze." And once once we'd called it bronze, it just took off like nobody's business. Um, some other brands, just to give you an idea. Um, in terms of bus lanes, uh, uh, there's a trolley bus just to prove the point I was making. Uh, there are a lot of bus lanes in Reading. There aren't very many that have been put in recently, interestingly enough, but uh, and many of them have been around for 25 and 30 years. But uh, they are absolutely vital because getting the buses away from the main traffic flow is the only way I know of keeping it as a clean from the trouble that other traffic brings. Um, now, Bob Teb. Uh, who really is, you know, the grandfather of us all, isn't he? Um, um, Bob. Uh, came to Reading, and, and Bob can see a BRT where everyone else can see nothing but sunshine. And, and uh, he, he took a ride on that. We, quite by chance, we, we, we plonked him in a hotel because I was coming to speak at a CILT meeting or some such, and we plonked him in a hotel out to the west of Reading, and he found a busway. Um, he rode into town on the 26th, and uh, the more he looked at it, the more he decided it was a busway. And actually, I think we better agree with him, uh, um, because this is a bus route that travels uh, from west to the centre in the town. It doesn't go along the main road, the A4, which is the obvious way to go for those places. It goes through the, all the estates which are to the south of it. And uh, it does so on a number of um, privileged routes, including a couple of places where it has these uh, sump breakers, and uh, they are most delightful things. In fact, one day a bus got stuck on one, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're, they're a pretty good way of stopping people driving a mini through, at least. Um, but uh, uh, they keep the, the side roads clear of other traffic, and that's really the matter, even if people do occasionally drive through them. So this route has... Uh, two sump breakers, a rising bollard, an AM peak restriction with camera control, uh, and a number of narrowing points where only cars can get through. And then when it does get onto the main road, it has a bus lane the whole length of it. So, uh, and 26 is run consequently pretty well. Um, and uh, no one would possibly think of that as a BRT, but actually for the cost of some quite small bits of infrastructure, that route is away from the main traffic and runs quite happily, whatever's happening, on the A4, which often gets congested because it's uh, parallel with the a M4. Um, in the town centre, uh, the borough council has actually recently made a very considerable change to the way things are. If you look at that sign, it says, pedestrian zone, uh, no vehicles except permit holders 7 to 11 and 4 to 7, which of course is the peak time. The whole of the town centre uh, uh, bus area is restrained in that way. It was very controversial when it was introduced. It was introduced by a conservative uh, administration, uh, and it works like a dream because it keeps the traffic free away in the in the busy times, and, and then they come flocking in in the off-peak times, but they don't really get in the way then. So that's really key. It means that um, uh, Reading is one of these places with a 1960s ring road, very inner. It's called the IDR, universally running, the inner distribution road. And within the IDR, buses are king, and that's really very important indeed. So um, we couldn't do any of this without Reading Borough Council. It's, uh, it's involvement in proactively managing the street hour by hour, 
uh, dealing with junctions, uh, talking with us uh, about issues as they come along, uh, keeping bus lanes clear, the, uh, um, and of course investing heavily in curbs and shelters and stops. And also real time, real time which is uh, such an important thing and, and so poor. One of the things about real time information in the UK is it so seldom works properly. And who hasn't had an experience standing at a bus stop where the, the thing says, you know, 25 minutes, 20 minutes, 17 minutes, 15 minutes, 40 minutes coming, and then suddenly it's 15 minutes again and nothing coming again. And, and buses that dis it's, we don't have so much of that, but we still have it, and it, and it reflects straight onto us. Um, ticketing, we have a, a horrible system of fare boxes, exact fare. Um, I inherited that, very difficult to get rid of it. Um, so we're moving very quickly towards smart card payments and uh, taking the payment away from the getting on the bus type situation. And uh, um, we've just um, jumped into a, a new ticketing system with a completely new manufacturer um, who uh, have done us a wonderful job actually and uh, uh, our system works remarkably well. Uh, we've had four or five months experience of it, um, but smart cards and payment through and wave and pay, Barclay cards and things like that, we're moving towards that. Using your mobile phone to pay, we've had some experience of that through Orange, uh, um, and uh, that's all very exciting and it's, and it's extremely good. We're really into advertising and pushing ourselves around, absolutely committed to Twitter. Um, three quarters of tweeters in Reading um, tweet to us or are involved with us in one way or another, which is really interesting. Um, I don't know what they do because they don't ride the buses, but uh, um, <laughs> um, no, it's not good. Um, our, all our modern buses have Wi-Fi, I mean, free access Wi-Fi, and that's um, a, a wonderful way of engaging with younger passengers. Uh, I, I took a, an old lady whose name was Freeman, the same as mine actually, uh, on a bus ride from the bus bus users UK she was, she said, well, what's all this rubbish about uh, Wi-Fi? And we went on a bus, and all around us, people were either using it or talking about it, and she said, oh, yeah, I see that. Hmm. So um, very important, this, because we do need to connect with the younger, younger people. I mean, you know, fewer driving licenses have been taken out by young people nowadays than was the case 20 years ago, and so these people are our customer base, and we need to be connecting with them, and they use all these things, and if we don't, we're not part of it. Um, so all of that's important. Interestingly, we've moved to um, on-bus uh, uh, voice announcements. Uh, you'd say to yourself, well, that's only for a small minority, perhaps for visually impaired people. Actually, it makes a huge difference to lots of people, and uh, it just adds to the, to the excitement. I can't get over, since I've got you sitting in here and you're 20 minutes late anyway, showing you a couple of pictures of hybrid buses, because we're really into hybrid power in Reading. Um, we've got four hybrid routes. Um, one of them is just starting a week on Saturday. Um, but this is all about getting on people's agendas generally. These buses are 30% uh, are better in CO2 emissions. Um, it's a very popular concept. We have a long history in Reading of going through um, funny fuels and odd kinds of things. If you were listening to me in, in uh, Belfast, we had bioethanol at the time. And I will have told you that uh, our bioethanol buses, which were um, nearly twice as expensive to run as diesel ones um, and had a lovely sugary smell which followed the bus along about 200 yards behind it so that when you got to the bus stop and smelt the smell you know you'd just, uh, just missed the bus. But um, uh, Although of course very frequent service so there was always another one along in a minute. But, uh, but hybrid is something that works, is here now and really appeals to customers because they can recognise it as being so they know what a Prius is and although these buses um, which uh, don't, don't, do, don't do it quite the same way, um, are, you know, they, they understand what they are. Um, we do a lot of work with people like the University of Reading, a very important stakeholder as far as we're concerned, lots of students, so we do a lot of branding, we do a lot of um, product uh, ranging. And back to the, this, I couldn't resist this, because um, actually, uh, this is a bit jingoistic really, isn't it? But um, it's rather nice to think that uh, um, we're putting a lot of modern hybrid, very... Um, upfront type vehicles into service, and they're British. So um, really and truly what we're trying to do um, with all this is to reposition the bus in people's lives. Um, I'm sorry about your wife, uh, Alan, that's a, that's a you know, sad case really, but um, uh, we, 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 we are trying to, to get people who, who don't think of buses as being relevant to them as being 
actually something that does matter and does matter in the town. So we do a lot of, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into media relations and getting people to think positively about buses, which they don't otherwise do. I must say all our bright colours in running do actually make an impact on that because non-decision makers do actually um, um, kind of, no, no, wrong. Decision makers who are non-bus users, that's what I was trying to say, who uh, often don't understand about buses at all. Right? I had a senior policeman come to me um, not very long ago, and he said, you know what, I realise now, you run a bus from A to B. He said, because A, I saw a bright yellow bus, and I saw one at B, so they must connect the two. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, but all this, all this quality, and we could go on and on and on about this, but you know we haven't got time. So, uh, um, but... Uh, all this quality is is really, really, really vital, and it's the little experiences that you have when you arrive at the bus stop or you try and get a ticket or whatever it is. And somebody said um, the thing about the Cambridge Busway is, as yet, I don't think that that side of things is all that particularly special, and I think people need to really give some attention to that. The busway itself is just amazing, and it, you know we need to keep saying, can't believe it's there. It's absolutely fantastic, but the ticketing and so on. Um, why can't you just have a ticket that goes both ways? Why did I have to pay a game when I went on a Whippet bus to come back yesterday? Uh, um, none of that seems to me to be quite there yet. So, um, however, it's all about quality. You can't afford to miss out on quality. So that's the message from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, James.